I am so excited because I think this is an answer to prayers. In today's video, we are going to introduce you to Vesta by Instafire, which is perfect for emergency heating and cooking no matter where you live. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kylie, and I am seriously so excited today because we have found the answer to emergency heating and emergency cooking for anybody, like anybody. If you live in a small apartment, you can do this and, and it doesn't cost that much, and yet it can cook your food and heat your, well, it won't heat your whole house, but keep you warm during an emergency and this is super fantastic so john tell them a little bit about how we discovered it okay well connell who is actually my sister's brother-in-law he's got this dream job of he just yeah. he just makes invents emergency preparedness devices so that people like us can help other people take care of important needs such as heating and cooking and so he reached out to us and said hey I've just developed a new product I want you so to take a look at cool. it and you know we get lots of those kinds of offers but you know this one really kind of stuck out first of all because he is family and friend and um, but second because it really makes sense this is a, a self-contained tool that just makes a lot of sense to us when i saw this i literally started to cry because i think it is a wonderful answer for so many people now let's talk about first the fuel and you can go back i'll leave a link to um one of the videos that we did on canned heat um this that's what this is now it's a little bit different than sterno sterno can make canned heat but this is designed to be used indoors so there are some sternos you can't use indoors and some you can these are six hour cans that can be used indoors and um this is made by ready hour and these are great you can get them we'll leave a link on the website you can get them there right now they're sold out but the place that we usually get them um is actually at sam's club yeah. It, so I just went when we found this out I'm like John I have to go buy more some more canned heat and so we got a bunch of it um, and this was $20 at Sam's Club for 12 cans that's a place where you can have the fuel and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the alternate fuel that we can use after we introduce the heater and the cooker so you want to tell them about the heater and how it works okay yeah this mm -hmm. is really a unique kind of a heater and, and first of all you have this all contained so that's the first thing that I liked about it um, you know my son said well you know I could just put three cans of safe heat out on the counter and and true it's going to produce the same amount of heat however this is contained in a nice package and the really cool part about this is it has a thermoelectric fan which blows now that's similar many of you have probably seen this kind of a fan that sits on a wood stove and this is a really cool technology now it's not going to produce a huge amount of energy but this is a Peltier device um, and if you can look right here you've got this hot part this is sitting on the stove so this gets really hot this is aluminum so it, it uh, transfers heat pretty readily then you've got this space in the middle this is a Peltier device in the middle which um, creates electricity by having a cold side and a warm side so the warm side down here the cold side up here and the movement of of heat through that Peltier device creates a voltage which is used to run the fan in other words all that he just said means if this is on a hot surface like a wood burning stove the fan turns blowing the air all over right so that <laughs> Peltier device is just cool and and they incorporated that into this and that's that's the thing that's really cool to me is they put that in here so they could have built one with you know a battery fan or a USB fan or something but this is built right in so if that you, was brilliant Connell like that was brilliant so you've got the hot side down here that heat is coming up and the uh, Peltier device is right in here which creates the electricity and that fan so that fan takes you know like between a half a minute and a minute to start turning 
but then as it heats up, it just goes faster and faster. I and like a better point gets, this way. All right. <laughs> it gets, um, gets really moving. So the ability to push that heat out and into the room, um, as opposed to just rising up to the ceiling, um, makes us different and better. And, and let's talk a little bit about the safety, too, because one of the things that this does, this is attached so that it can't just fall over, right? This will get hot. Um, but it's not too hot to put your hands to it um, or hands on it and it's got these little legs so it's on my kitchen countertop and I don't have to worry about it catching something on fire now would I ever put it near bedding or anything like that absolutely not no. you know that doesn't that doesn't make any sense we don't want to we don't want to put any flammables near it but as far as a, a safe or a safe device to burn in your home it's fabulous. Now let's talk a little bit about carbon monoxide. That's one of the biggest drawbacks for indoor um, heating devices is that a lot of them you have to worry about carbon monoxide poisoning. And this is our favorite kind of carbon monoxide detector. It is battery operated, it has a digital readout so we can take it anywhere. And if there's any levels of carbon monoxide that start to um, be formed or d go into the air, we will know it. And so we always keep it near us, right? Right. But that's one of the blessings of safe heat is that when you're burning safe heat, yes, any flame can produce carbon monoxide. You need to make sure that you have oxygen for that flame, right? right. So we'd never put this in a closet that's ni a nice tight closet because you're not going to have enough oxygen. We right. have to be really smart about that. But for the most part, this is safe to burn indoors. It's also safe to store indoors. So those of you who, you know, you can't store propane in your house or gasoline or anything like that, and you live in an apartment, what are you gonna do? Well, this is safe heat, and safe heat is safe to store indoors. Now, we want reasonable quantities, and you always need to check with like your insurance or your landlord and make sure that something like that's not prohibited. But for the most part, yeah, yes. this is really common, right? To be able to store indoors. And check this out, like, like this is so cool. Now, this is how it operates as a stove. And right now, um, so it has the capacity for three cans. Right. Um, and in this one, you always have to have it. Is it underneath? At the, least the one on this on this end. There, you have to have the one in there, so you can use that for the thermoelectric fan as well as the heat, or you can have the you know two cans or three cans. But you have to have the one at the back here to drive this fan. So it kind of controls the temperature, right? How hot you want this to burn, how many cans you're burning, and that. If you look at that canned heat video that we did, that was what we were trying to do. We were trying to find a way to put more than one of these canned heats together safely yeah. so that um, we could cook. Now in this one, you notice this is a really good boil. This canned heat right here is off, but both of these are lit. And that's plenty of um, heat to bring this to a good rolling boil. Um, and also one thing I forgot to say was that the, the safe heat the manufacturer, when I called them, said they have a 10-year shelf life, but I have found in my personal experience that um, they're still great after 10 years. Don't store them on their side, store them in their cases, upright, Flat, yeah. and it should last for a really long time. So why don't you show us how we put, take that apart? And, or maybe we should do this one first so that I can take this off. Hmm. This is Ben's lunch, or his dinner, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, so let's just set that right there. These do have little handles on the side. Now you don't want to touch the side of this because this is metal and it gets pretty hot. It's, it's right next to these. It's it's hot, but it's not burning me. Yeah. Right? But you can pinch these handles if you need to move this somewhere. And as always, you want to make sure that these are open flames. We're dealing with open flame. We need to make sure that, you know, if there's children around, we're managing that. We're or staying wives. with it. We're staying with it, close to it. Um, to make sure that it's safe. So, and then again. So this this is a snuffer, right? It, and that's how it we doubles extinguish as them, the, but we also pull out the drawer with it. Yeah, so and then it just snuff those quickly. And my lids, where did I put my lids? Oh, here was my lids. Uh, Connell did say that on occasion, they have uh, snuffed one and left the others burning and the other one there was Hot. enough heat and flame that it uh, lit it again so he said just just put a cap on it if you snuff one out and want it out 
just put a cap on it and then then that's safe and one of the other things about this is you notice we didn't screw them on tight if you screw them on tight then by the time they cool there's that vacuum created and they're not <laughs> ouch they're not ever going to be able to um, do that okay let's show them how we would take this one apart okay so again number one is back here this is the one we would always leave running if we if we had our room warm enough let's say oh wait before we do that do you want to measure the temperature for them oh sorry we'll slide that right back in there let's move it right here so this is about 220 degrees it's picking up right here on these fins um, on the side here um, we're about 160 degrees and what one of the things I really liked was just putting my hands on here you know it doesn't get so hot that it's gonna burn me but it feels really nice feels really just to nice. put my hands on here and warm them uh, but don't touch but the these, back though the sides will get pretty warm so you, again you have to just be cognizant of that um, so then Again, we'll just snuff these out. And once they cool, remember we talked about these being a six hour can. So you should get roughly six hours of burn time. It's possible you'll only get five point something, but roughly that's what you're gonna get. Once these are cooled, we are gonna put the lids back on tight so that the fuel does not evaporate. Yeah. So that's really important to know. Now, because we know Connell, anybody who is, um, has to do with any of this should just go away because we're gonna show you an off-label use for this that made me um, really excited because quite frankly, we have all of our friends in Europe that are really gonna struggle to keep warm this year. And this would be so super fantastic for them. However, I don't know what the availability is of canned heat in Europe. If you can find it, super, super fantastic. And I would totally do that, you know, um, these are great you can get them from their site and have them just delivered to your door um, but sometimes we might not have that option so i asked connell like connell could we use an alcohol burner is it possible and he said yes one of the things that he was a little bit concerned about is that um, with an alcohol burner if you don't know how they're used you pour the alcohol in the center and then the fumes burn right um, and it's you've got this really nice clean flame if you click the card in the corner we'll leave a link to a video that we created comparing some of the different alcohols like um, denatured alcohol to well we compared safe heat on there too but we did Everclear and we did isopropyl alcohol yeah which um, you don't want to use isopropyl is just not unless you're freezing to death yeah if you're yeah. freezing to death and you don't have any other choice then we have, to just, make, we have to make do with what we have. It just doesn't burn as clean. Um, has a little stink to it, and it's just yeah. not, as, not as good. So we do have that issue, so you're going to want to be careful. But these are just little alcohol burners, and I am a huge fan because alcohol, you can get alcohol places, right? And you could make your own alcohol. So it's possible, and we're going to show you, we're going to try and use this, using just these little alcohol burners. But remember, this is an off-label use. We're just giving you some options. I'm not saying that it's super safe. I'm just saying that if it comes down to freezing to death or um, trying some alcohol, you you might want to try that. So let's yeah. fill these yeah, up. Yeah, I, I definitely right think the, the safe heat is, uh, a chafing so fuel better. is a, is a better choice. But, much better choice. Um, so we'll be right back. We tried to pour it directly from this. That wasn't such a good idea because we don't want alcohol spilled anywhere. So we're just gonna use this little cup and put some alcohol in each one of these. And that to me is probably the biggest reason that I would choose the canned, uh, the safe heat over um, this is just because you do have to pour fuel and it just creates opportunities potential problems but but if but that's we're what you've got about, see when we're wise we're going to stock up like this but then we always need to have a backup plan um 
In fact, Colin had said when we talked to him that one of the things that we're going to do in some of the next versions of these is put little dividers in here so that they don't have any movement with the canned heat. One of the things about burning alcohol is a lot of times right when you light it, you can't see a flame. So you don't know if it's actually lit or not. So you need to be super careful. Right now, it looks like it's burning really, really well. Remember, we're gonna try really hard. We don't want that alcohol to slosh in there, right? But now we've got our heater and it's gonna work on the alcohol. I don't know, I haven't tested how long these last, that's the other thing, is that those little burners, they're pretty little, but these six hour cans, they'll go for a long time before you have to change them out. So like I said, this is definitely an off-label use of it, but I think that it's something that might come in handy sometime. One of the great benefits that I see of this is, do I smell anything? No, there's no nasty smells or odors in my house. And also, listen, that fan is incredibly quiet. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's yeah. amazing. Very, very quiet. And so, yeah, it's not gonna heat your whole house. It's not gonna do that. But man, is this kind of like a space heater. Right? It, it's just so amazing. And it wouldn't be like a, your 1500 watt space heater. No. You're not going to get that much heat, but to have something that you can use in an emergency on fuel that you can store safely, not a bad idea. Um, this is one case, 12 cans. If you're using this eight hours a day, um, this would last you, if you're using three cans at a time, it would last you three days. So it's actually a very, very well, effective. It's cost yeah, it's, effective yeah. in some respects, right? It's not as cheap as natural gas. It's not. Right. But, um, but wow. And just the fact that we could stick these away in the bottom of the pantry or something like that. And this is how, oh, it's right there. This is how it comes um, from them. It comes in these little two packs. So, um, and I think either one would work just fine, whichever one you can have that's available. And quite frankly, I would get on this. This is, this is such an answer to prayers for me because I have worried so much about all of our friends that live in apartments and can't store fuel or, or things like that. And this is, it's lightweight. Like it doesn't matter if we're an older lady or an older gentleman or anybody can lift this, right? Oh, I think it was eight pounds. Is that what it was? I don't remember. I want to say it's like something like eight pounds. It's nice, it's portable. When you store it away, you could store it in its original box. Um, if you're thinking about getting Christmas for somebody that you love that's in that situation, I think they retail for $129. This is a great solution. So if you want it, get on it now. And now for the question of the day. What are your plans for emergency heating and cooking? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.